All right, so this is going on page 45, and we're done. So remember, there are two ways we're looking at to divide polynomials. We did polynomial long division yesterday. We're doing synthetic division today. And if there's only one way you remember how to do it, it is long division, okay? That one's probably going to be the one that sticks with you the most anyway because it's just almost exactly like doing it with numbers. Um, whereas with synthetic division, sometimes people forget the setup. Like once it's set up, you can do it. Um, so if all else fails, long division works, okay? It works for all of them. We are restricted with synthetic division. So this says synthetic division is a shortcut method to divide polynomials. Then it says this method only works when dividing by a binomial with a coefficient of 1. And then I put a little asterisk there because it's a half lie. If you had Ms. McWhorter, you did some synthetic division where the coefficient wasn't 1, but you had to do something before you did the synthetic division, then you did it, and then you had to do something after. Okay, that, so you can force it into synthetic division, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's good that you know that and that you have seen that. But my experience with that method in the long run is that the mistakes that happen there are way greater than mistakes that happen in other things because people forget to do that last step or something else weird goes on there because there's like a lot of odd things to remember because it's kind of a trick shortcut. Um, so, I, so the way we're going to think about it is we what this says basically. The only way I want you to think about it and do it unless, I mean, there could be one or two of you that just remember that other 100% and it makes sense to you. That's fine, but I know that that's not the great majority. So we're going to look at it as it only works if I have two terms and the leading coefficient is one. That's like the safest way to do this. Okay. All right, so we're going to skip a few of these. Which ones do I want to do? We're definitely not doing them all. Okay, let's start with number 12. So let's talk about the setup first. Um, yesterday, for long division, we would have put this on the outside and all of this on the inside of the house. Okay. Same basic concept as far as where things go, but in synthetic division, you do not use variables at all. Okay, so we're not going to use any of the x's. It looks a lot cleaner. It is, in most people's opinion, easier. But again, you have to remember the process, and it only works on some things. What we don't do is, so we put this x plus 4 on the outside of the house yesterday. We don't put the factor. We put the 0. So if x plus 4 is the factor, the 0 is negative 4. So you got to make sure you pay attention to that, because if you don't use the correct numbers to begin with, you have no hope of getting any of this right. So we put negative 4 on the outside. Then we make the house upside down, but bigger. So it looks like that. Then what goes inside the house on the other side of that negative 4 is just the coefficients of the polynomial. So I'll put a 1, a negative 1, a negative 27, and a negative 28. Okay. This was x cubed, so since it's x cubed, you should have four coefficients in there. It's always, you always have one more than whatever the exponent is. Then you put another little upside down house under that last one, which somebody last period said it's like the basement. So it is. You put the basement in there. Okay. All right, everybody good with the setup? So although this is synthetic division, and yesterday when we did long division, we actually divided. You're not actually going to divide, I mean, in the end, what we have is a result of division, but we're not dividing anything when we do this stuff. Here's the way it goes, and it's fairly simple, but again, if you don't remember the actual steps, bad things happen. So we're going to take whatever this first number is, and it just comes straight down. We get a 1. Then we're going to fill in three more numbers right here. And to get those, we take whatever's out here, this negative 4, you multiply it by 1, you get negative 4. We're also not subtracting like we did yesterday. You just vertically combine. So a negative 1 and a negative 4 is a negative 5. Then I take this negative 4, multiply it by this negative 5. That gives me a positive 20, and that goes there. Negative 27 and a positive 20 gives me a negative 7. Negative 4 times negative 7 is a positive 28. And then in my basement goes 0. And what is in your basement is your remainder. Okay, so my remainder is zero, which means that this divides evenly, which tells me that x plus four is a factor. Okay, that's not what they're asking me right here, but then I would know since my remainder is zero that it is a factor. So then to actually write my answer, this divided by this is, this is what I use right here. I have one, two, three numbers. 
That means that the exponent on the leading term is one less than however many numbers I have. I have three numbers. That means my exponent's two. So my coefficient is one. That gives me x squared minus 5x minus 7. Okay, so it's a lot cleaner looking. Yes, it's faster. It's easier. That's all fine and great as long as you remember how to do it, which we do need this skill also. We're going to apply it to some other things. Um, but there we go. Any questions about that process? Okay. It's all fine and good to be easy as long as you remember what to do. All right, then we're going to skip to number 15. So on 15, tell me what goes on the outside of the house. Positive 3. Good. So I put a 3 out here, and then inside the house goes 4, negative 16, 20, and negative 16. And then I put my basement under that last number. So I'm going to bring down whatever this first number is. So I bring down this 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 16 and positive 12 is a negative 4. 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12. 20 and negative 12 is 8. 3 times 8 is 24. Negative 16 and 24 is a positive 8. Everybody follow the process just fine? Okay, so now, is x minus 3 a factor of that polynomial? No, because my remainder is not 0. So I'm going to write this like I did before with my remainders. So I have three terms here. That means my leading term is x squared. So I have 4x squared minus 4x plus 8 plus, remember we add our remainders no matter what, I make a fraction. The numerator is the remainder, which is 8. What goes in the denominator? x minus 3. Good. Use x minus 3. Don't use this right here. Okay, and then that is your answer. Okay. There will be times where we want to get something that has a remainder, and we'll talk about what that is when we get there. And then there are times when we want to get stuff that doesn't have a remainder, depending on how we're applying this. Okay. Any questions at all? Okay, so because there's a lot less writing and a lot less room for error, there's a lot less sign mistakes that happen here. They still happen because they happen everywhere. A lot less that happen here than with long division. So the more likely thing to have you get a wrong answer, even when you know what you're doing, is the missing powers. I mean, that's a big deal for uh, long division also, but that's probably like the second most common error. It's definitely the first most common error here. Okay, so. We're going to put on the outside of our house, and this would be x equals negative 8. So negative 8 goes out here. This is x cubed, which means I should have four numbers that I write in there, but there's only three terms here. If I start with x cubed, I have to have an x squared, an x, and then a constant. I don't have an x squared, so you have to have a placeholder or your answer is wrong. So we have one for this coefficient. I don't have an x squared, so that coefficient is 0. Then I have a negative 49, and then I have a positive 120. Even if the constant term is missing, you would have to have a 0 here, because it changes where your remainder is and how many, you know, how many steps you go through. Everybody understand the setup? OK, then you go through and divide this one. When you're done, check yourself with me, and then let me know if you have any questions. Does everybody understand where everything came from? We're all good? Give me enough time? Okay. Then I want you to do number 17 on your own. How many numbers go inside the house on 17? Five. Five. Yes.
Then you do have, then you have to do, you didn't put your little, then you have to do negative 8 times 15 will give you a negative 120, right? This one seem a little weird as you go through it? Yeah. Okay, don't let that stump you. Go through with confidence. And there's nothing wrong with zero. He's just as important as the other numbers, sometimes more important. So if that's what you got, that's what you're supposed to get, okay? But you're only going to get that if you put those zeros in there like you were supposed to, because however many zeros I have there is very important. Now, I'm going to write down what this actually gives me. You don't have to write this part down. You can if you want to. It's not what we would write as our answer. But if I have, um, just so you kind of understand why all these zeros are important, I have four numbers here, which means my leading coefficient, or my leading exponent is three. So this is one. So really this gives me x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. That's what this gives me, all right? So I have basically these three missing terms. Obviously, we wouldn't write this as our answer. You're not going to see it like that, but that's what's happening. So like if I did have something here, I would have to have a number here. So my actual answer then is just all I get from this is x cubed, and then I have a remainder, so I do plus, and then it's negative 1 over what? x minus 9. And remember, you always add your remainders because weird things can happen with those fractions depending on the, what the remainder is. I don't want you to have to overthink it and then possibly get it wrong, so just be consistent in what you do. It's the best thing for you to do. Okay? Any questions? Awesome. Flip it over. Let's look at how we are going to apply this. Okay, so this says, how can division be used to factor polynomials? So suppose we are given this polynomial function. Right, so let's take this polynomial, I'm going to rewrite it over here, and we're going to factor it just like we've been factoring stuff. So if I have x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8, okay? I have four terms, so what process would I use here? <laughs> Grouping. Okay, so I'm going to group these first two, and that'll give me x squared times x minus 5. Then I group these two, factor out of 2, and that leaves me with x plus 4. Do we have a problem here? Yes. So if this happens on the other ones you've been factoring, then that, that usually tells you, hey, you did something wrong. We did not do anything wrong. The ones that you've been given to factor, because um, they didn't say factor if possible. It said factor, which means they were all factorable by grouping. This one, not factorable by grouping. We can't use the skills that we already have. That does not mean it's not factorable. That just means we can't do it in the, uh, with all of those tools we have in our tool belt. None of them work, so we've got to have something else. So right now, the next best thing is they give us the, uh, the polynomial, and they give us one of the factors. They tell us it is a factor. If it is a factor, when I divide, what's my remainder? Zero. So pay attention to the wordings in the question. If you're told it's a factor and your remainder is not zero, you did something wrong. If it says, is it a factor, then it's yes if the remainder is zero, it's no if it's, it's not, right? So make sure you pay attention to what it's saying. So since we know this, we can go ahead and we're going to do our synthetic division. So 4 goes on the outside. On the inside, we're going to have 1, negative 5, 2, and 8. And I still put a place for my remainder, knowing it should be zero, hoping that's what I get in the end. That means I did it right. So I bring down my one. Then this gives me four. This is negative one. So this is negative four, negative two, negative eight, and zero. So I'm good. So what this gives me here, this gives me x squared minus x minus two. Okay, so that's basically the answer that we've been getting. 
But what this says is, it says write, it in fa write this function in factored form and then determine the zeros of the function. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite, I'm just going to rewrite this function. So f of x is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. Okay, so I just rewrote it. That's all I did there. My first step in my factoring, they gave me a factor. One of my factors is x minus 4. So f of x is equal to x minus 4. And then since I divided that function by x minus 4 and I got this, that's the other part of it. x squared minus x minus 2. Because if I divided, when I multiply them back together, I should get this, right? So that helped me get started on my factoring. They only gave me one factor, so I don't get to use synthetic division again here because I only have one. Um, so instead, I need to see if I can actually factor this by the way we know how to factor. A is 1, so if I can factor it, I would get, so I rewrite x minus 4. And since A is 1, I could jump to my two parentheses here. This would be x and x. This is negative, so the signs are opposite. What are my two numbers? 1 and negative 2. So now it is fully factored. So it says factored form. This is factored. This is fully factored. Okay, so I got my full, it's fully factored now, even though I couldn't factor by grouping. Then it says to determine the zeros. So my zeros, what's the smallest one I have? Negative 1, then 2, then 4. What questions you got? So it's not all about just, hey, go do synthetic division. We're going to use it to help us get to an end result that we want. Okay? Any questions at all? All right, so we're going to jump down to number 19 here. It says, given the polynomial function and one of its factors, so it's telling me this is a factor, we're going to use long division or synthetic division to write the polynomial in factored form. So when you're given the option of the two, the way I want you to look at it, at least right now, is that if we can use synthetic division, we're going to use synthetic division. And then we'll use um, long division when we can. So this one, I can totally use synthetic division. So this means that x equals negative 3. So we'll put negative 3 out here. Inside, this is cubed, so I should have four numbers. I don't have any missing terms. Always check for that. 2, negative 3, negative 32 negative 15. Okay. So you go through and go ahead and do your synthetic division. So on the other one, I rewrote the original function. I'm not going to rewrite the original one. I'm just going to start from the factoring part. So f of x is equal to, they told me this is a factor, so I get x plus 3. The second part of this comes from here. So this will be 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Okay, so they started the factoring process for me. So now that I get here, A is not 1, so I don't get to just jump to the two parentheses. I'm going to go off to the side here. Well, actually, I don't have to go off to the side. I can, I can do it right here. Um, I've got F of X. Well, I'll have more room. I'm going to go off to the side just because I don't know that I have enough room there. And I have 2X squared minus 9X minus 5. Right? And so then go ahead and factor that by grouping. And you should be able to do this on your own and not just copy mine down. That's the idea right here. That's why I wasn't talking you through it. If you cannot factor that, we've still got big problems. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so once it is factored, we have f of x is equal to, so we have x plus 3 times 2x plus 1 times x minus 5. Okay, got to be able to factor quickly and accurately because it's n just a small part of everything else we're doing. Now that I have these, I'm also supposed to find my zeros. What's my smallest one? Negative 3, then negative 1 half, then 5. And those are your two answers. Okay. What questions do you have? Anything? Understand this process here? Okay. So let's look at number 20. Can we use synthetic division there? No. Okay, we're going to go with no. So the answer is just no. No. So how do we have to divide? Long division. So go ahead and do your long division on number 20. Remember, to, when you're doing long division, leave yourself a little room at the top. I forget sometimes. Uh, I can tell somebody I'll forget too because you just try cramming your little answers up there. So I'm not going to talk you through it. You just divide on your own. Always check for missing terms. And remember, since it said this is a factor, your remainder should be zero. If it is not, you've got to go back and check your division. Once you've divided and you've checked yourself with me, but don't, again, don't just copy mine down. Get it done on your own. Um, then go ahead and write the next step and see if you can get it fully factored. Get it factored and find your zeros. Okay. 
Double check yourself if we don't agree, see if you can figure out why. If we do agree, then go ahead and do 21. Can I use synthetic division on 21? Yes, you can. So that's what I would suggest we do. So when you're done, check yourself with me. Don't just copy mine down. Check yourself with me. If we agree, you can go ahead and fold and tape and get started on your delta math. If we don't agree, see if you can figure out why we don't agree. Ask me questions if necessary, unless you just caught something on your own. Some of you may need to still go back to those old factoring assignments and do more drill and practice. And one thing that can hinder you from being a rock star at factoring is not knowing your multiplication facts. If you don't know how to manipulate numbers in your head pretty easily, at least the basic ones, it makes figuring all this out a lot more difficult. Um, also here, I chose not to do my factoring by grouping off to the side because I didn't have a side basically. So when I do that, I use brackets because I don't want to get lost in my parentheses. You don't have to, but it's not a bad idea. Okay. All righty.